We are happy that you are celebrating with us. We have these announcements. Our church, art, and environment volunteers are replacing plants that were among the Easter flowers. If you'd like to adopt a plant, they are located outside the north doors of the church. Please help yourself. Thank you to everyone who has made and paid their pledge to this year's annual diocesan appeal. We are currently $6,700 away from hitting our payment goal. If you have made a pledge and not yet had a chance to make your payment, please do so soon. Remember that any excess funds collected over our goal come directly back to our parish and this income does not affect our future ADA goals. Now as we prepare to celebrate this Mass together, let us stand and greet those who are around us. Good evening, everyone, and an early happy Mother's Day to all mothers with us today. Let's come together in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This weekend, scriptures give us the image of the good shepherd who cares for his sheep, leads them to life. As we prepare for this celebration, let's attune our hearts to the voice of the shepherd. We call to mind our sins and prepare for celebration of the Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you gather your flock from every land and nation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You lead us to springs of life-giving water. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You nourish us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Give you thanks for 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them, and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse, contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this, and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshippers, And the leading men of the city stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then, one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in the temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst any more, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Each year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we hear one of the Good Shepherd passages in John's Gospel. This year, a, a shorter passage, but a wonderful one. It reminds us of the importance of our relationship with the Good Shepherd, who gives us comfort, who gives us life, and who guides us in our life. You know, it's such a comforting message. It, it actually, that image of the Good Shepherd in that title is one of the very first images that the early church had in its art. If you go back to the catacombs in, in Rome, which I had the privilege of doing here a month or so ago, one of the interesting first images in the catacombs is a shepherd carrying a sheep on its back. A loving image of, of Jesus caring for his early church. Jesus says to us today very simply, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Does that describe us? Do we hear Jesus' voice? Do we always follow? I uh, recently saw a cartoon. It had a, a young man who was uh, sitting in front of a computer. He had his earplugs in and, and, and his listening to music, I suspect, on his iPad. And, and, and the sound was blaring out of the, the computer. And, and he says, God, why don't you ever talk to me? <laughs> I mean, it was a little bit sarcastic way of saying God can't talk to us if we're not listening, <laughs> if we're not taking the time to allow God to speak to us. The point was clear. If we're surrounded by other voices, if we're surrounded by so much noise and we're not quiet, how do we learn to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd? This is Mother's Day weekend, and, and we could draw a lot of parallels between the Good Shepherd, sacrificial love that a Good Shepherd shows, and sacrificial love that parents show. Thinking about that, I, I think I'm reminded especially of my mother teaching all of her kids to pray. You know, not only my dad and my mom taking us to Mass all the time, and, and, and uh, also praying together as a family. The family rosary was a common routine in our house. But I remember the childhood prayer book that my mother made for every one of us. You know, it was, I still have it, filled with all kinds of prayer cards with little prayers from various places. But the very first page is my own handwriting. I don't know, seven, eight-year-old writing down the daily offering. <laughs> and I can remember mom actually dictating it and spelling it, <laughs> but those, the, all the words of it, but I offer you this day all my joys and sorrows, everything this day. I should know it by heart, shouldn't I? <laughs> but what a beautiful thing. I mean, and, and we think about our mothers to teach us faith. What more precious gift could we receive? The knowledge of the Good Shepherd and how we listen to the Good Shepherd in our lives. And it's touching. I hear parents talk all the time about tucking their kids in at night and saying prayers with them. I, that's such an important thing. And maybe especially as we honor mothers to thank our mothers for passing on faith. Why is listening to God important? Why is it important to learn how to tune our minds to the, the voice of the shepherd? Well, it doesn't mean that life is always easy. You know, I, 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 that, that line can, can make you struggle a little bit. There's no snatching out of God's hand. But it doesn't mean that we're free from all suffering and pain if we listen to the voice of the shepherd. I mean, it's simply not true. Jesus didn't promise us always rainbows if we give our life 
to him. But he does say this, believe in me and I will never leave you. Believe in me and the promise, uh, in the end there will be redemption, there will be an end of suffering, there will be eternal life. That's a, a powerful thing to think about and it's why all this Easter season we are hearing from the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is all about God's victory. It's all about heaven and we have a glimpse of heaven in the reading today. That's where the good shepherd leads us. We're told of that great multitude today from every nation, every people, race and tongue living in the presence of the Lamb for all eternity. So I think about that. In the early church, those first Christians hearing the book of Revelation and in the midst of their own suffering and, and how that must have given them a sense of peace. Not just that there's eternal life, but that promise that can never be taken from you in this life and that it should guide everything that we do. A wonderful message. But even more than giving comfort, it should also cause us to be good shepherds to one another. You know, uh, uh, the Acts of the Apostles tells of, of the apostles going out, and even when they're mistreated, even when they fail. I mean, today, Paul and Barnabas fail miserably. You know, they don't want to hear what they have to say about Jesus, and they're kicked out of the synagogue, and yet they continue on and say, well, we'll go on to the Gentiles. And the door of faith is open to the Gentiles. But that ability to not give up, to persist, to keep going, that's a gift that comes from knowing the shepherd in our lives and knowing that nothing can take that peace away from us, that promise that we're given. That's incredible faith. And we're all charged with that very same mission, to be good shepherds, to the hurting of our world, to, to one another. You know, I, I'm reminded of a story of a, a woman who one cold evening before Christmas, she was shopping and, and saw a little boy outside a store window, a department store, and, and, and he uh, was shivering in the cold. He had a, a jacket that barely kept the wind off of him, and, and, and his shoes were held together with duct tape. And, and the woman took the boy in, into the department store and said, come with me and let's see if we can find you some new shoes and a new coat. And she purchased it for him. And, and then afterwards, they walked out of the store and she wished the child well and said, hopefully now you can have a warm Christmas. And the child looked up at her and said, ma'am, are you God? And her response beautifully, she said, no, no, no. I'm just one of God's children. And the little boy said, well, I knew you had to be some relation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We all are some relation if we listen to the voice of the shepherd. Let's remember that. Let's remember what he says in that gospel today. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. They will never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. He is our good shepherd. We belong to his flock. believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father through whom all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the Lord's resurrection, we bring our prayers to God who redeems us and guides us. For the church, that we may recognize the voice of the Lord and follow the invitations of Jesus to a fuller life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and for all who are discerning a call to ministry, that they will hear God's invitation and respond with generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers and those who have been like a mother to us, that God will bless and strengthen them and inspire us all to a greater love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers, that the Holy Spirit will inspire all who are working to end violent conflicts, especially in Eastern Europe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for Robert Huss, father of Jim Huss, and particularly for deceased mothers, that they may experience the love of the Good Shepherd and rejoice in God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our Book of Intentions and for the prayers we pause to mention in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gentle shepherd and guide, help us hear your voice and to follow you. Renew our efforts to care for all who are hurting and to lead all to your green pastures of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh 
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly, it is right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Formed by divine teaching and at the Savior's command, we now can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us. Happy to welcome to the table of the Lord for the first time in just a few minutes, Evelyn Metz. Congratulations, Emily. Evelyn. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle into eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. After Mass, we're going to baptize Jack, Joseph, Rarit, Josh and Emily's son. Congratulations to the Rarits. Also, congratulations to Evelyn Metz, making her first communion. For all those, both of you. <laughs> Let's bow our heads to seek God's blessing, and first a special blessing for mothers. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so may you give life and care for your church. Bless these women as we celebrate this day in their honor. May they be strengthened as Christian mothers. May the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that their sons and daughters may always honor them with the spirit of profound respect. May the example of Mary, mother of Jesus, inspire them in their vocation as mothers and inspire their children to faith. Guide and protect them in challenging times and help them continue to trust in you all the days of their life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. People of God, see the morning is new. Rise from your sleeping and run to the tomb. Come and see, come and see. He is alive, a grave that is empty, a promise fulfilled, God who was with us is here with us still, He is here, He is here, He is alive, Alleluia, love is alive, conquer the grave and defeat it. been broken, abandoned, your shame, lift your hearts, lift your hearts, he is alive, hear now his mercy embracing your soul, hear the fulfillment that once was foretold, it is true, it is true, he is alive, hallelujah. The sun has arisen for